back on the Chad HD Show News Talk, 95.1 FM and 790 AM KFYO. We send it out to Leveland and SS Outfitter Sky Strachner joining us today. Hey, Sky. Hey, Chad. How are you? I'm going, uh, doing all right. How are you? Answering questions. About <laughs> bump stocks. Uh, t- tell us a little bit about bump stocks. What do we need to know about them? What do they do? Well, you know, it, it's kind of wild. They've they've been out since 2010, and the company that pretty much kind of started it was a company called Slidefire. And uh, in 2010, I have the I have the letter here in front of me, the approval letter from the ATF, and I'm just going. I'm going to read this little part about it, just kind of give people some info on it, and you know how it was approved by ATF. And it says right here, the stock has no automatically functioning mechanical parts or springs, and performs no automatic mechanical function when installed. In order to use the installed device, the shooter must apply constant forward pressure with his non-shooting hand and consistent rear, rearward pressure with, the, with his shooting hand. Uh, according, accordingly, we find that the bump stock is a firearm part and is not regulated as a firearm under the Gun Control Act or the National Firearms Act. You know, that was signed by John R. Spencer, Chief Firearms Technology Branch. So... You know, that was approved in 2010. You know, I bet I've sold maybe two in, since then. You know, it it never really kicked off over here. You know, ammo was expensive when people were, when that was available. I shot them. It took some time to get used to how to use it. You know, very, very inaccurate. Uh, it's just it's kind of fun for a little bit, and you're like, man, I'm blowing through ammo. This cost a ton of money. And yeah. you know, I had a lot of people just kind of look at it. I, try, I think I kept one for over several months and just you know nobody wanted it just kind of thought it was pretty impractical and never took off and i saw another uh big shop in lubbock kind of say the same thing just you know not very don't work very good uh they can cause the gun to jam because you have to kind of get in a rhythm when you're using it and the higher the capacity mag it's, it seemed like they wouldn't work as well sometimes i had a, I had a surefire 60 round mag at the time i was i was getting it to work with and just i don't know it was just Nothing, nothing that really kicked off them. So I, I've never carried them. Um, I don't believe we're going to get them, uh, especially, you know, what, I've been kind of watching what they're saying on it. If they're going to they're gonna ban it, regulate it, um, you know, I, I've seen some things. If they, if they do decide to ban it, you know, it may not get grandfathered in. Right. And if that's the case, then you're in possession of an illegal item. And that's what I've been telling people, you know. Be careful if you find one of those, buy one, spend a bunch of money on it, and if they do decide to ban it, you're gonna have to turn that thing over. Um, so we're just gonna we're gonna stay away from it. We're gonna see how this whole deal how this deal goes. And you know, I, I put on my Facebook page yesterday. Um, you know, we don't have any, probably won't be getting any. And, and I had a lot of people come in there and just say, yeah, you know, I, I understand, agree, have no use for it. You know, the the kind of the core guys, you know, and, and me too. You know, we. You know, we don't want to, you know, give them give them an inch, they'll take a mile type deal. Yeah. Uh, you know, we we if they're gonna if they're gonna do some debating over it, you know, let's let's have you know non emotional style bills, you know, drawn up. Let's let's sit back, think about this, and and you know, see if it really would have you know solved any issues. And I kind of think that's where everybody's at. And I've been watching a bunch of other gun stores, and they're all kind of in the same boat. You know, they're like, no, oh, we didn't sell many of them. You know, we kind of don't. You know, we're everybody's kind of on the on the fence about it. It's just a very very slippery slope. You know, if they do write something up, we don't know if you know other stuff will fall into it. If they'll try to throw a bunch of other stuff into it that doesn't need to be into it, and because there are there are other modifications people can make, right? That will make the gun. Yeah, there. There's fire another. Quickly. Well, there's there's another trigger out there. Um, it it was it was a style trigger that you just drop in, and when you when you you know obviously pull the trigger it goes off and then when you release the trigger it goes off so you could sit there and you know increase the rate of fire by doing that and you know that might be subject to this too it's just you know it's really it's really early to know and i was listening to you this morning and and we're still trying to figure out why this guy did it if he had help there's just so much going on this is such an odd situation and a horrible situation and we just i don't i think everybody just needs to kind of cool off and sit here and let this play out and see see what happens and just no no knee jerk reactions but, but so but before we get into you know some of the guns that you have in stock uh because you said that you, you had fired 
uh, a, a rifle with the bump stock on it that you had to get in kind of get into a motion. Get in so, tune with it because so what you do, and I'm so, not going to go into a lot of detail because yeah. y'all can get on YouTube, look up just you know bump fire stock. There's stuff all over there that'll show you. You really got to see how somebody does it, cause, and it's very odd when you do it because you actually don't. Like if you're right-handed, you're not sitting there squeezing your your right-hand trigger finger to to do it off. Your trigger finger goes across and lays on a block. It's built in. The, the pistol grip is built into the actual stock that slides on a on a buffer tube, on a carbine link buffer tube, and you the, your finger stays in one spot on that block that goes across uh, the trigger, and you pull forward with your left hand. And uh, if you pull forward and hold forward real hard, it'll only shoot one time. You have to do it real lightly and let that recoil come back, and you know, and it'll sit there and start, you know, bump firing. And uh, it just it was made it to where it was easier to do. You know, you can do it without it. Um, you know, this just made it easier to do it. And I mean, I remember people telling you how you could take a, uh, you know, take your thumb, put it in your put it in your um, old belt loop, and you know, hold the gun down your side and do it. There's there's videos of people doing that. It's just. It's just very inaccurate and practical, and you know, not many, not many people really did it after they learned how to do it. So, yeah. But it it does. It, it takes a rhythm to do, to to make it you know work and function right. And you so know, this guy I, had to practice. I believe he would have. And then I, you know, I'd heard this morning. Uh, I thought that you know they said he had twelve. Yeah. On all his firearms, and then they said a lot of them had jammed. Correct. Right. I, I, th- th- I, I have not heard that, yeah. but that wouldn't surprise me. I mean, that would be a reason why. Right. You would want twelve of them because they're it, it jams. It jams, and you know, and and that happened to me. And it was just a simple deal to where uh, you had too much forward momentum on it, and then it just is a, it didn't reset. So what you'd have to do is drop the magazine, uh, rack the uh, action a couple times, you know, free up anything, put the magazine back in it, load it, and then continue on. And I mean, it just uh, it's a pain. It's it's a pain, and um, I yeah. And, well, let's talk about something better. Let's talk about the guns you do have in stock. <laughs> okay. way, way better, way better. Uh, man, a little bit of everything. I got guys sitting here uh, getting ready to pick up some uh, some Creedmoors right now. That that gun is still you know super popular. Uh, I got in the the, the extremely popular the, the Ruger American uh, Predator and six five Creedmoor. Uh, that one I've been waiting for those for a good two months now. I got five of them in today. Those are four twenty five, and that's an I have personally shot that gun at 100 yards, and that thing, I could stack them on top of one another for a $425 gun. If anybody's looking for a rifle with lower recoil but affordable and, you know, shoot whitetail with or, or kind of play the long-range game, come in, check that rifle out. Uh, yesterday, I got to shoot my first uh, Gen 5 Glock 17, and, man, that thing was nice. I sold it to a... To a friend of mine that's on a it's on LPD, and he was he was telling me that LPD as of by 2020, uh, they are all moving over to the Gen 5 17, hmm. and uh, it's pretty cool. And anyways, we went out and shot that dude right fast, and man, that thing was nice, super accurate. I, I was back at 35 yards, and I was shooting a little silhouette target. And, I mean, just with ease, I was I was very impressed with that gun. So uh, we got some of those. Uh, got 17s and 19s. Still got some ARs. That that is kind of sort of picked up, or people are asking about that. Kind of just thinking that you know, if if, if something does happen, I haven't seen. I don't think it's going to get crazy yet. But yeah. Um, but that, that that that's still you know something that people are asking about, and lots of cheap ARs have been selling. So, but uh, mostly right now, bolt guns. People are getting ready to stock up on uh, you know deer hunting rifles and and doing scopes too. Have a wide array of all our vortex optics so we can. We can get your gun fixed up with, and silencers been selling a ton of those. Um, you know, I, I don't know that, you know, me and you, we talked about that Hearing Protection Act, and I think that's going to be put on the back burner yeah, for a that, while Yeah, it's now. not going anywhere. No, it's, yeah, and I think it's dead in the water for a while, so. But, uh, man, we can we can get you fixed up on that. I got those in stock. Those things are awesome to hunt with and shoot with, so if anybody's got any questions, just give us a holler. We do have a license to carry class tomorrow. Starts at 9 a.m. It's $110 a person, 85 if you're a college student, first responder, um, veteran. Uh, it's forty dollars to uh, to the state, and you'll be done by about two thirty tomorrow. So mm-hmm. it's a quick in and out class, and we'll have another one on the twenty eighth of this month, and probably going to be our our last classes for the year. Just November December gets real hectic; people's yeah. schedules are all over the place. So, uh, Sky, real quick before I let you go, uh, we had uh, a listener who texted in. Uh, what would you recommend for a uh, female to carry in her purse? Female to carry. 
carry in your purse. Well, I don't like purse carry for okay. females, but well, you got to be you got to be responsible where you fit your purse. Yeah, yeah, you, you, know, you got to be careful with that. Somebody grab your purse. You know, they're going to get more than a hundred dollars. They're going to get a firearm yeah. if they steal it. Um, man, Glock forty two, forty threes, uh, six hour, two thirty eights, nine thirty eights. Uh, I got some people coming today and tomorrow to check those out uh, for their wives. Um, those are just small, accurate, super easy to shoot uh, pistols. Uh, revolvers, revolvers are still good to do. Uh, some airweight Smith and Wessons, um, just little little small guns like that. And if they got some questions about, it, uh, call me. I think one of the coolest ones, the Ruger LCP, uh, the little three eighty. Uh, those are two eighty plus tax. You'd be out of here for under three hundred bucks for just the gun. It doesn't take up any room at all. It's tiny and uh, it works good. So something like that, that'd be a great little concealed carry handgun. Scott, tell folks where they can find you. What your hours are. Man, we are 13 miles west of the Reese Golf Course on 114, six miles east of Leveland, and uh, 10 to 6.30, Tuesday through Saturday. Follow us on our Facebook page. Go to uh, our website if you need to know some of the specifics or just give us a call, and uh, we'll get you fixed up. All right, Sky, thank you. Thanks, Chad. Appreciate it. That's Sky Strachner, SS Outfitters, Highway 114 in Leveland.